How's it going guys, this is Riley from Nerd Network coming at you with a new weekly download. This week we're going to be discussing Bioware's new game Anthem, the future of Marvel's television series, and the possibility of getting some live action Old Republic content from Star Wars. So sit down, plug yourself in for this week's weekly download. Well, it just got released, and already BioWare's brand new game, Anthem, is going through some updates. Not unusual for a game of this scale, usually there's day one patches on a lot of AAA titles coming out these days. What is unusual is that it's actually for the better. Um, BioWare has shown that they're listening to their users by taking their criticism from people playing the game prior to launch, and really trying to fix uh, and tweak their game to make it a better experience for everyone. Um, usually that's not what EA is known for, um, as we saw with Battlefront 2 when it was released, which was hectic to say the least. Bioware is actually taking into account what their fan base is saying. One thing that's going to be changing in the newest update is load times. A lot of users were saying that load screens in between certain areas on Anthem were taking too long. But now Bioware has fixed that and shaved off a few precious seconds of gaming time for you in between loads. Um, one of the biggest things that got added in this new update is the fact that a lot of people were saying that the challenge of the Legionnaires, which are missions in between the main story missions in Anthem, where, say, you go revive your teammate five times, or destroy 50 enemies, or explore a certain location before you progress on to the next story mission. Originally in the beta, players were saying that these missions were taking too long, hampering story progress. Um, one of the main issues for this is that the challenge of the Legionnaires couldn't be completed until you were given the mission. Meaning if you had to destroy 250 enemies before moving to the next story, you weren't able to until you got the mission. There weren't any background updates, it's not like all the enemies you defeated up to that point got added to that specific challenge. Now that's not the case. Now the challenges of the Legionnaires will be in the background. So if you're going to explore a specific location and then that challenge comes up and you've already been there, it's already completed so you can go and continue the story. Now this is really interesting for one of two reasons. One, it's showing that Bioware is actually caring about what their community is saying and adjusting that. Another thing is that they're being quick about it. Now that's really important because most games take forever to patch content that's not working or things that are bothering their fan base. Take Fallout 76 for example. Bethesda waited a long time before releasing patches and updates that fixed many missions that were just unplayable when that game launched. Now the fact that Bioware is doing it so quickly is awesome because now you can actually go play the game in a better format. If there was something wrong, it gets fixed, which is exactly what you're paying money for. Another thing is that Bioware announced that there's already going to be content coming out next month. Now whether this additional content is new challenges, uh, more story, or something as simple as cosmetics remains to be seen. But it's good to see that Bioware is already expanding the game a month after launch. We can definitely expect to see more Anthem content very, very soon. And if you're interested in watching gameplay of Anthem, we will have that streaming in a couple of days, so definitely do check that out. But in the meantime, on to more news. Well, it finally happened, and now all the Marvel characters on Netflix have been cancelled. That's right. Punisher and Jessica Jones just got added to the slate of new television series from Netflix that have been cancelled. Uh, again, this isn't much of a surprise. We knew this was going to happen back when Daredevil got cancelled. Now, the reason for doing this is twofold. One, Disney's moving all of their properties over to their streaming service, Disney+, Plus, which is launching later this year. And another reason is that Netflix doesn't really want to be involved with this series anymore, apparently. One of the actors on the series actually stated that her contacts within Disney said that it was Netflix's decision to cancel the shows without any pressure from them. Now, originally it was speculated that Disney wanted all of these characters back underneath them so that they could create their own series and better tie them in with the Marvel Universe as far as the cinematic side goes. But evidently that isn't the case. Netflix is canceling these shows of their own accord. And because of their contract, Disney's actually not allowed to use these characters for two years from when their shows were canceled. Meaning that we would see, potentially, Iron Fist and Luke Cage in the Marvel Cinematic Universe first, followed by Daredevil, and then finally Punisher Jessica Jones. Now whether or not Marvel is going to continue each of these series on Disney Plus is another story. I would really like to see the continuing adventures of Frank Castle and Matt Murdock but that might not be the case. Now, not only is Marvel taking all of the characters from the Netflix shows, but they're actually planning a few series on Disney Plus that are connected to the MCU. 
one of which is going to be a Loki standalone series, which has been announced to actually be somewhat of a prequel. It's going to have Loki interacting with characters from the past and showing how he influenced history here on Earth. Now this is interesting because Marvel isn't confirming or denying whether or not Loki is going to be alive after the events of Avengers 4. Now we did see him get killed in Infinity War, but the possibility of him coming back is still very real. Even though this is a prequel, there still might be bookends of him in current day going on misadventures and the like. There have also been talks of there being a series involving Scarlet Witch and the Vision, and another one involving Falcon and Bucky. Now whether or not both of these are going to be set in the same time as Loki's series, where it's going to be somewhat of a prequel, or if we're going to be seeing them at all remains to be seen, however they are working on them. In other Disney Plus news, we are going to be getting a few Star Wars series that are going to premiere along with the streaming service, one of those being The Mandalorian. This series will take place after Return of the Jedi and focus on a lone Mandalorian mercenary as he explores the universe. We will also get a prequel series focusing on Cassian Andor, Diego Luna's character from Rogue One, which sees him rise through the ranks of an early rebellion. But honestly, that's not what we're most excited about. Recently, there have been rumors about a Star Wars series focusing on the Dark Lord, Darth Bane. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Darth Bane's character, he was an individual who operated during the Old Republic, an ancient Sith Lord who created the Rule of Two. His story was shown to us through a series of books, which are now currently not canon. However, the reason this rumor exists is because Darth Bane recently was made canon by appearing in an episode of the animated Clone Wars series. There, he was voiced by Mark Hamill and spoke with Yoda about the power of the Force. Now, a live-action interpretation of something from the Old Republic era would be really interesting, but also, solidifying Darth Bane's story in canon would be a whole nother thing as well. I mean, he was one of the most influential Sith Lords in Star Wars history, and he would focus on things in the Star Wars galaxy that we've never seen up to now. Again, this still is speculation, but with a little bit of truth behind it. If you're interested in a Darth Bane series, comment below, let us know what you'd think, or is there another character you'd like to see in a live-action streaming show on Disney Plus? Well, that's the weekly download. Thanks again for sticking with us. If you liked our content, please drop a like and definitely comment below with what your favorite part of the download was. If you'd like to stick with us and see all of our gameplays, our top 10 lists, and more of the weekly download, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so that you'll never miss out on new content. Once again, thanks for sticking with us and we'll see you next time.